G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Eno here from Fantasy Take TV. Today we're going to be looking at the round two review, speak about um, obviously the team but some trades that I did last week that I um, am not too keen on showing you. But looking forward, um, you know, there's quite a few players that are, that are topical this week. Um, you know, it's the big week with what the rest of the team sort of changing price we had six of them um the week just gone a few of the round zero teams and then um yeah carlton and brisbane win the buy and then obviously the rest of the league so you know it's pretty much time to make some some pretty key decisions what you know rookies are you going to get that are on the bubble um any underperforming mid prices or maybe even premiums that we have that we'll talk about um trade them to sort of make sure you're keeping the cash uh, generation going um and then there's a few injuries. So um, I scored 2046, which um, was a pretty good score this week, I guess, looking at about, yeah, what, 12,000th of the round. But that basically halved my rank. So I was sitting about 73,000th last week after round one, which I think is maybe the lowest I can even remember. Um, but yeah, halved that into into 37,000. So look, ranks whatever. We're, you know, within. You, you know, 100, 200 points of being right at the tip top. Um, not quite at the leader, because I think the leader's maybe 4-5, four, 4-6, four, something like that. So already a bit behind them. But, um, yeah, with these best 18, 18 weeks, you sort of really need some um, premiums to pop off, which we had, uh, I guess, one, you could say definitely one, maybe maybe two. Um, but there was, there was quite a few. So um, don't get too disheartened. You know, you still want to make sure your team's in good shape especially coming out of this week um, with a lot of price movements. And then, you know, there's still a few more buy rounds to go. Um, round four, of course, remember, is is not best 18. There's no buys. And then five and six are. So, um, yeah, still a key point in the year. You're going to have to figure out um, what players have to go, what players are going to come in because there's some, you know, there's a few ones popping their or putting their hands up. Um, so, yeah, we'll get into, into the team. Now, last week... I mean, a lot. Last week's a bit of a weird one. So there, you know, it wasn't a normal round two where you know players still aren't on, the, you know, aren't on the bubble yet, and you can just sort of sit on your hands and and you know players you've picked in your starting team. You want to see them, you know, get another sample size. Um, but for me, there was a couple of opportunities to to get some players that uh, either were on the bubble or you sort of wanted to get early to, um, you know, give yourself an option to have three trades this week. Heading into you know the rest of the of the league being on the bubble. So look, I was I was umming and ahhing about boosting. I did get rid of uh, Nick Martin and Zach Fisher. That for me sort of I didn't want to be stuck with them this week. And whilst they both scored all right, you know I think Nick Martin got a ninety, and, and Fisher actually just you know he turned up. So I was probably more keen on holding Fisher if I had if I chose to hold either of them. For me, Nick Martin was sort of always going. I think him taking up a spot in my midfield was. Um, not warranted, but I mean, if you, you can see what I've done, um, that probably wasn't warranted either. So I think I, sh I made a mistake. I could have definitely held onto the boost and just done the two trades, which were, you know, Nick Martin to Sarong and then Zach Fisher down to a Billings. I could have done that and I think I would have had roughly, I don't know, a couple thousand in the bank. I uh, really wanted to get Sarong in. I was big on him sort of a month, three weeks ago and just sort of as pre-season progressed, uh, he just found his way out of my team. You know, Darcy got injured. I wasn't sure how he was going to go um, without, like, his primary key ruck, but he's taken another step forward. He, he looks amazing. Um, and then Jack Billings was the other one. You know, we got robbed of starting him. was the sub, obviously, in round one. Um, or round zero, sorry. And so that, that score didn't, um, you know, was in his system. He turned up or went pretty big last week. And then this week he was a bit so so um, so he still got a negative break even this week. You know if I just stuck to those two moves I would have been pretty happy. But my third one, very silly, was getting in Riley Bonner. Now he was someone I was big on preseason as well, and just got a bit of I guess you could call it FOMO. I, I was so close to starting him and and just took him out of my team late. And I saw you know he's obviously big score in round one. I was going to get Tom Berry, so to be fair. I mean, I guess I probably still did Tom Berry because I probably just would have made more money on him because um, I think he still went up 30, 40K this week and then just flipped him this week anyway um, because, uh, look, Bonner, obviously with Sink back, Sink didn't have too good of a game, but Nass has taken just another step forward and he's he's absolutely dominating um, at the minute. 
Sink I guess did take a few kickouts, so you know Nas doesn't actually take too many, or he didn't this week at least. Uh, and look, that was why I didn't start Bonner. You know, all the question marks over when Sinclair comes back, what happens there? Um, and, I, and I think Bonner can still score pretty well. It's just that, again, my reasoning of he's taking up a mid spot. I mean, I just moved Nick Martin to Sarong. Why, why didn't I just sort of move Bonner to... I mean, look, Massimo should have come in. That was a, a blunder on my on my part. I should have left uh, Dacos in the midfield, got Massimo in, and then I wouldn't have had to get Massimo this week and I could look towards other, uh, you know, possibly not boosting or, or using that trade for maybe a rookie or something like that, um, which we'll get to once I, I get to my trades. But look, Bonner's break even still 10. I think if you have him and you did start him, hopefully you didn't trade him in like me. Um, I think he actually can hold another week if you want to. Essendon at Marvel... He's got a very low break even. He's not going to drop in price, but it's more what do you want to do with that spot? And do you want to, you know, maybe if you're benching one of the, uh, I call them the big three, Roberts, McKercher and Sanders. Like if you're benching one of them weekly, that's been pretty, um, that hasn't been optimal for the first couple of weeks for you. Um, you know, maybe you got away with Sanders on the bench last week, but this week he comes out and pretty much tons up. McKercher's gone 90 both weeks um, pretty much and then Roberts came out with a 90 this week after a a pretty decent score last week so like for me I want them on field every week so whatever trades I do I'll be structuring and making sure that is the case Um, but yeah so look we'll just go through the team and then I'll get to what I'll I'll, I'll actually be looking at doing um, this week so uh, in defence Stu awesome 150th game you know, to take 10 intercept marks and tie the record again, I think it's, I think he might have done it before. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I definitely know Darcy Moore did maybe last year in a particular game. But I think there's a few players now that have done had 10 intercept marks in a game. I think his first three were contested all on Luke Pedler, and then they quickly uh, gave up with that matchup. But it just let Stewart be loose for the rest of the game and do what, do what he does. So he just had a really good game. It's just, he's always quite frustrating to own like he's a sl- he's going to sleepwalk to pretty much a 95 100 every single week you can't be you're not going to be worried about that but he's only really ever had a couple of ceiling games in his career and that's when he's had like 40 touches i think it was against freo a couple of years back and he went 170 180 like he needs he needs 30 touches really to go big that these uncontested intercepts whilst they're you know amazing to watch he's, he's really you know it's probably the best in the game at it and has been for a few years Sometimes they just don't get enough, you know, as much points as um, as what other players do for other, you know, different type of acts. You know, he's not super contested, although he did he did win a few ground balls, um, intercepting and stuff, and and driving it out of defence. So look, uh, no question, you know, no qualms. Only Stew, he's going to do what he does. Probably average around one ten again this year, and be a fine starting pick. It's just as long as he stays healthy, um, you know, and, play, and plays pretty much every game. So happy with Stu. Nick Dacos, big to- uh, talking point, of course. Uh, they prayed on the, um, I believe on the Thursday as well, last week against the Saints. That was a big game. They're now 0-3, but just the whole team, I think Collingwood have just, um, they're just all somehow in a bad patch of form at the same time to start the year, and it's it's probably going to cost them. Um, I mean, finals would be hard to make from, from 0-3, and they get, then they get Brisbane this week away. Um, you know, the possibility of going 0-4, it's going to be really tough, but Look, when Thursday happened and Nick's dropped this score, obviously you go back to a couple of the preseason teams I had without him. I'm not... Look, there's obviously quite a few of you that probably were toying going without him and then just, like myself, saw the 70% ownership. It is Nick Dacos. He could easily go 130, 140 to start the season and not want to miss out on that and, and, and pay the price. So, obviously he opted to start him. He went, what, 130 in round zero, 130 in, in actual round one. Happy days, you know, happy I, I caved. But this game, look, whilst it uh, seemingly out of nowhere, it's just, I don't know, starting a guy that's that highly priced, you thought surely this year some teams will be putting more work into him. Like he's their driving force, like with all their ball movement, transitional movement. He, they feed him the ball. But for whatever ga- reason this game, they just didn't. They, they you know, he had a few turnovers early Um I'm not sure how much time Winhager put into him, but their midfielders just isn't winning the contest and they're not able to, to really get it to Nick and let him do what he does. So, you know, with Titch falling off a cliff, Pendlebury is probably their best midfielder right now, which probably says uh, quite a bit about how they're going. Um, Crisp hasn't been in good form for a while. 
you know, it's just hard for Nick to dominate. He's not a ball winner, so he's not, you know, he'll, he'll get loose balls um, in dispute, but he won't win his own ball at the cold face. So he needs those guys to be doing, you know, to be in good form and doing that for him um, so he can use his one of the best kicking skills we've probably seen from a player at least his age um, ever. So at that stage on Thursday, what I'm getting at, he was probably 90% of his way out of my team, you know, with Brizzy away coming up. I know he went big on him last year. People will say that, but Collingwood weren't in this type of form. You know, they were, they were on top of the ground beating everyone, um, you know, pretty much every week. Whereas I can see, look, Brizzy aren't in the greatest form either. And you can also say that, but you know, even if he went a hundred up in Brizzy, then he possibly would have uh, a tag game against Hawthorne. And then the buy, I thought probably 90% of his way out of my team, but then the rest of the shit happened. So, you know, she's perfect, love that I own him, wanted, wanted to sort of when just no one was sort of looking his way pre-season, you know, we all had these set four or five defenders and she's she's wasn't one of them, he obviously went big in one of the pre-season games and, and now his ownership's like 50%, so, you know, it doesn't feel as good owning she's, but he does what he does, he's going to be a keeper all season. Hayden Young happened, so <laughs> I still think he can be thereabouts you know, top eight defender, maybe you can stretch it to top 10, but in, in, in essence, what you really need to do is 100 to 105, and I only see a few defenders doing like your 110 plus, you know, like Stuart, Dacos, maybe your Luke Ryan, if you know, we get to him, and then the rest sort of doing, you know, 100 to 110, and if you got Young sitting at D6 doing 102 for the year, you'd be fine with it. Uh, I think that'd be more than fine, starting pick for, you know, 525, um, happy days but he's had two games like 11 clangers last week i think eight or nine clangers this week he's sort of got that defensive role in midfield so he's still tackling pretty well i think he had 10 tackles last week it's just his kicking efficiency and you're not like he's getting absolutely no points for any of his kicks and you only have to look as far as zach butters on the weekend i think he had 15 kicks and 14 of them were effective and yeah that's why he went 170 because he doesn't waste a possession and i'm not expecting that from hayden young but you can't have 30% kicking efficiency mixed in with clangers as well. You know, like it's just, it's not good for super coach and whether he's just in a bad patch of form, you know, he had a really good last five weeks, six weeks last year in the midfield, you know, tackled well, test the ball. Um, and I haven't looked it up, but I can guarantee he wasn't going at this, this type of kicking efficiency. So he's someone that I still think can be a good option for us going forward. It's just now, dropping a 70 and a 62 his break evens shoots up to 165 if you look he drops another 80 score he's going to drop 40k and and just be really you're probably going to have to end up trading him next week so i think it sucks um he's probably now my avenue to to massimo which um, we'll look at in a bit but um i still believe he can be a good player and a good scorer in this role it's just with the start he's had you can't really afford to keep it um, when when it's such a money game these days. You know, you lose forty k there, then you're arming and ahhing. Next week, do you hold him? But you you know, he's four eighty k, and and who do you go to? Um, so it's it becomes really tough. Um, so I think he's you know pretty much going to have to go from my my side now. And and Nick lives to see another day because he's clearly still going to be top six. Um, the Pies will figure something out. Whether or not they win more, ga- you know, enough games to make finals is is a different question. But I think with Nick himself, he's going to be dirty with that performance. You know, I'm expecting some more tons from him around the corner. Finn McGuinness may not even play. You know, in a couple of weeks' time for Hawthorne, uh, I see none of them. You know, a lot of their fans not wanting him anywhere near the team because, besides what he does, you know, nullifying opponents, he doesn't. He can't do anything with the ball. He's he's not. You know, when he's in the midfield tagging someone, he, he's just they're down a player essentially and they're really getting beaten in the contest so uh, yeah Finn may not even play obviously then the buys whatever um so he survives you know young has to go uh williams we use as a loophole house was really good you know he's going to be one of the best defender rookies but clearly that's not too hard with the way it's going red we've still got on the bench gibkus we traded out last week uh marty hall is the sub this week and then got a half and still only managed to score 12 i think he had about 35 dream team so uh, i didn't really watch the second half of that game um because the first quarter was boring enough um he must have just butchered it and i guess the game was over you're not going to get many points in the second half of a, of a, a dead rubber um so yeah 
I know Caulfield went down. Some people might have traded to him or, or have him anyway. So, yeah, it's just a disaster back there. I think that makes Massimo a must, really. He's, you know, got such a low break even. Um, his role actually looks pretty good with what he's doing, starting on the wing and just trolling back to defense, always sort of around the contest. So, um, he's not a winger that sort of holds his width too much. Maybe when they have possession, he does and and. I know that first quarter, they were just switching it back and forth and it was it was a bit of a joke. But obviously, that's not going to happen every week, you'd think. But his natural role, like what he's doing right now, he's, he's around the ball a lot. So, um, another 90 dream team for Massimo. I think he just butchered his first few kicks in the first quarter. Uh, and that just, yeah, you know, in a game that becomes a blowout, um, it, it hurts. So, yeah, he, he has to come in and I think uh, it'll be from Young. So, the defense, I mean, I know George... Ugh, his defense is absolutely shot uh, the poor man and got Caulfield in this week got Hall like me we started him and then Reed obviously still sitting there just got rid of Gibkiss then you got the Dacos and Young issues it's just yeah I don't know. there'll be some people in worse boats than me so I am glad I did opt to start like a Stewart and, and have an extra premium back there just makes it a bit easier uh, going forward the midfield obviously Bont starting him at such a high price you need him to go real big each week to to justify it and he's gone one what did he go 126 136 so you know that's good enough to start we're going to need a big score this week against the eagles i'm sure he'll be in everyone's captaincy plans whether that's vc probably captain for most unless you're willing to put you know the c on uh, heaney or someone like that so yeah big week for bont this week i know he copped a couple of knocks that he played through and and soldiered on so look we take we take that from Bond. Uh, I think he had a, quite a few clanger kicks as well. You know, could have gone a lot bigger. But we're happy with Bond. You know, you, you want to own Bond. You want to own the players you love to watch. He scores, you know, he's so powerful, um, especially with the Gold Coast mids and how they've started the season. Uh, sort of just asserted his dominance. Him, Liber, and, and even Trelaw played well. So, um, yeah, dogs, dogs bounce back week, and then they get West Coast at home this week. So you, you should hopefully be expecting big things and, and be rewarded. Tommy Green, great starting pick, I think. You know, Bio obviously this week hurts, but um, we knew that coming in. He's gone 140 average to start the year. Um, I guess more since, we, you know, we didn't get the round one score. So 150-something, 137, beautiful. Um, he's going to be going up in price, even from, from what he is now. Uh, and I just think his role's just insane. You know, he plays 90% of the game and 100% midfield when he's on the ground, and he's just a machine. So... Yeah, love having Tommy Green. Will be a heavy captain option uh, most weeks uh, after the buy. So, yeah, love having Tommy Green. Sarong we got in this week. He was really good. Again, like the first two, could have probably gone bigger. Um, missed or Got quite unlucky with a couple of goals that were either like just short, touched on the line, bounced and rushed through. Like he, he probably could have had two or three. Um, he's just in a rich vein of form and he's really come on now like he's... What is he? 23, 24. Um, it's all those next sort of generational mids that are that are starting to um, starting to blossom. So, yep, Sarong, um, very happy to own him, uh, and he was my VC this week, which I obviously took. Um, Ollie Wines uh, was pretty like I can't say too keen on this pick in the preseason, but keen enough to to what I was seeing that he would be back to close, you know, full time mid. He's four sixty k. Port's opening fixtures, very, very soft. I just think these two games against, what, the Eagles at home, hot day, and then Tigers at the G on a hot day, they're quite end-to-end -end games. Um, not a lot of stoppages for him. I think, uh, looking at stats, he was still, like, the highest uh, clearance player for Port, highest first possession, like, he's still the hit-to guy in all the stoppages. There just wasn't a hell of a lot of stoppages. It's still sort of, obviously, hot coming off the back end of summer. I think like this week might even suit him more. You know, harder team in Melbourne, sure, but at home it, can, it should be a more contested type game, more hotly contested. Two good teams. You know, wines will be relied upon a lot more. You know, but Butters and Rosie were just doing whatever they want, roaming free. Captain anyone against our midfield, please. Every week, if you have someone, because uh, just what we've got rolling through there right now is no synergy. There's no barely any defence. Um, they can't win a clearance, centre clearance. Like it's very, very poor stuff from the Tigers right now. So, um, look, he didn't do a whole lot, and he, he basically turned up like 99. And I think any other year, you'd be happy with this, and you'd you'd be keeping it for a lot longer. Uh, and I think I still will. 
But if you want to jump off lines now, I, I have no qualms in doing so. His CBAs were up a bit higher. They're, they're still not as high as probably people want him to be. But when he is on the ground, he's playing He's playing 100% mid. It's just his togs sort of around your 70, 75, um, or what it's been for the first two weeks. But I still want to hold another week, I think, for myself and see, especially against Melbourne at home, a big game, what it looks like. Because at least this week, obviously, Horn Francis is out for a few weeks. They put Drew into the midfield. But they actually took away a bit of like Mead and um, other guys that were getting more, you know, playing more midfield time in round one against um, against West Coast because obviously Tigers are not great, but they're a bit better team. And obviously it was, it was a bit of a back and forth for at least a half. So, yeah, I want to see what happens this week. And then after that, if it's still looking poor uh, or not as good as we want, he, he's someone you can move on. But if you want to do it this week, more than, more than fine. Bonner, we've already talk, talked about. Um, I'm probably trading him. It was just a terrible blunder on my part. Um, you know, my other option was going at least not boosting and having, you know, a bit of money in the bank or uh, probably would have ended up going Tom Berry. And that obviously backfired. I mean, it's a low-risk move. You still got 40K out of him or whatever. His break-even was so low, but he only scored a 20. And I think a lot of people I've seen in the Discord that, that went that way uh, are looking at trading him straight back out. So... Essentially, that's what I'm going to be doing with Bonner. And in hindsight, it's a worse move because I didn't make uh, any money off him. So, um, if you do own him and maybe you'd started him, you want to see one more game against Essendon at Marvel. Again, I think he's like Wines. You can probably hold and see. Um, he did have a couple of really good patches um, as far as scoring points. <laughs> but the rest of the game was absolutely horrible. A couple of terrible clangers. And, um, yeah, I'm not super certain on his job security, to be honest, at this point anyway. So... Um, yeah, very poor trade for me. Boost down already, um, and he'd probably be leaving my team again um, this week with another boost. Uh, the big three I uh, spoke about, um, Darcy Wilson was good. Um, I think it's just going to be about that 60 average um, you know, rookie. He might have some poorer games, but I think there's uh, chances for him to have some you know, some decently big ones too. Um, just playing that outside role, it's hard, hard to know week to week. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'd be wanting him locked on my field every single week, but he's someone that you can maybe loop or, or um, you know, I think you can field him. It's just you might cop a poor score at some point, but the Saints are in good form right now, so um, it might not be that bad. Carroll comes back this week, and then Jai Clark was better. You know, it was hard to be much worse than, than what he was the first week, but, you know, not as many clangers or only a couple. There's obviously more mid-time with Atkins being a late out and Bruin being out, you know, at team sheet. So, uh, Parfit came in, played a bit of midfield. I think Blitzarves played a bit of Ruck and Ruck were over as well because uh, Stanley was out uh, injured for a little bit of that game and then uh, Mark O'Connor played it a little bit too. So, I think Tanner's back this week. Uh, Atkins, I'm not really sure if he is. I'm not sure why he was out in the first place. You, someone might be able to tell me, but yeah. Um, look, Clark, I think if he's your worst rookie, he's one you can move on. But he gets Hawthorne this week, and uh, as much they've been struggling big time in the midfield. Um, he probably still has a role in there. He's one you can hold and, and give one more week to as well, I think. So um, I think for me, he'll be staying for now. But, you know, we're looking ahead to like Sam Darcy. He looked really good this week, first game. If he's the worst one, and then I think it's fine to probably trade him. But um, it's just a really good year of rookies, and you want to make sure you've got the absolute best ones because everyone's sort of going to have rookies on their bench making cash. But you obviously want the be the best ones possible um, that are making the most. So, um, Grundy, very rough watch. Uh, as I said last week, sort of baited, obviously, into starting in with that round zero match against Gorn uh, when he was ill. And what's he, what's he produced? A 70 and then a 99. Um, it's not great. His break even is up to, I think, 110, 112 now. So I think, look, once that 70 drops off this week, it might lower again. But, I mean, I can, I can see him doing 70, 80, 90 again this week against Nank. And it's just not good enough, really. You know, what you can be getting in the ruck position um, isn't really going to cut it. You know, Gorn's there. English is going to go probably berserk the next few weeks. Um, you know, even, obviously, Jackson, who I've got, you can have him at R2, which I, I think a few would have gone with to start the year or maybe move towards that last week. So, um, 
yeah, Grundy's are definitely on the chopping block, and we'll talk about that in a sec. And then Rowan probably had his worst game I've seen him play in a while. Like, he was comfortably beaten in the in the ruck. He was awful, you know, with some of his possessions. And he still managed to go 106. So I think that's probably a positive sign for Rowan that we get such a poor game. He still tons up, um, and, and he's been a decent starting pick till now. Obviously, Gorn's been, you know, a bit better. He went 160 last week. So uh, I'm happy with Rowan. I think he's at least top three ruck. It's just whether or not is he going to be number two, which obviously you, you want the best two um, for the year. But he's fit. He's in his prime. Um, we'll back him in. Obviously, he's not going anywhere, uh, and we're happy to have him because um, obviously he doesn't have the buy. Gorn does, so we'll see if we can get some points back in a few weeks uh, with that. Jackson, ridiculous. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. You know, I think he still lost the hitouts to Cherry, but he was just so dominant around the ball. You know, clearances, contested ball. If he wasn't winning the hit out, he was first on his feet to try and um to try and mop it up and make sure they still won the clearance and he was just superb you know went forward clunked a couple uh put them through the big sticks what do you have 25 touches something like that uh, a few tackles like just an immense game um from a young player that's just really coming into his own so it will be super interesting what they do when when da, the big shrek is back but that's still probably in my opinion at least three weeks away like i know they said three weeks heading into this week on the injury report I don't see any reason for them to bring him back in when they have, like, if he's fit for Port, I guess they'll want to. Um, but Jackson's more than capable of doing a role solo against Soldo, like, you know, winnable game. Um, and then West Coast at home, you know, like the Derby, obviously, at home, it always will be. Do they need to bring him in for that? I'm not so sure. So if we can eke these matchups out of Jackson as a solo ruck, we'll be happy. Even if Darcy does come back in one of these games, you know, if Jackson's playing a bit more forward against West Coast, uh, am I really going to be upset about, about that? Dogs' back line's kind of iffy as well. Tigs are decimated. I mean, we'll probably have a couple back by then, but uh, it'll probably only be Tyler Young. You know, Gibka's still out for, for the season. So Jackson might be a watch longer than I anticipated picking him. Um and now with a 19, you know, 19 break even, he's going to make a, a ton of money. Um, yeah, very, very happy we, we uh, opted to go with him. Um, and I get everyone's, you know, who didn't, um, their question marks with, with doing so. But I just thought, you know, in the forward line, a solo ruck, we saw what he did at the end of last year, albeit he did have a lot of soft matchups. But he's just come on, you know, he's improved again. Him and Sarong have improved again. Um, they're still young players coming into their prime and... and they just look very, very good at the moment. And yes, they did play north. I understand. Um, but the way Adelaide's going, you know, uh, George is telling me it could be another good matchup for him this week. Isaac, I mean, look, if you saw him after the round zero game at about a quarter and a half in, uh, I still, and I get the burn man, you know, mantra. Oh, he's burnt me this many times this year, this year, that year, whatever. It looks different, and I could see that from that first game before before Supercoach even started, and I had to pick him on the on the back of that. And we've got pretty much two one thirties out of him, and he hasn't even played Richmond or West Coast yet. So, look, if you didn't go for him last week and jump on him, it becomes a question again: Do you still do it now with two games before the buy? And to be honest, I probably still would, because there's definitely. Like, he's gone 130, 130 with, like, one goal, two goals, I think. Like, there's chances he kicks a bag against us, West Coast. Gold Coast is at home. You know, wouldn't wouldn't be put it past him. Hawks, like, it's really going to be hard to watch for longer if you don't own him. But I know I know how hard it is to uh, to not be stubborn and, and then, and, you know, force him in even after he's obviously had a price rise and he's now 545k, so... Yeah, uh, look, Isaac in, in immense form, great to watch, uh, and very happy to own him. Jordan sort of just works his way to these types of scores every week, I think, and that's why I always sort of was keen on having him because whilst you might not notice him enough, he, he just does the right things, you know, he doesn't really waste it. He gets a few tackles here and there, a few contested possessions. He, he had a, nut, a couple of lovely, you know, works up and down the ground, got on the end of one. Um, either score assist or yeah, it was that last goal he kicked was was uh, incredible, really good finish. So yeah, loving having Jordan. We get the next two matchups obviously, and hopefully he can get to you know push towards 400k, and then it's going to be a decision: do we cash that out then at the buy? And I think most likely yes. Um, but he would have ended up a really good pick for us 
you know, from that point, starting at, um, you know, 270-ish K. If he gets to 400 with some good scores on field for us, um, yeah, I'll be more than happy to cash that in. It's just going to be a hard question, you know, say he does go very, very big just before his buy. You, do you want to milk more cash out of him post-buy? Um, it'll be it'll be a, a big call. Billings, we spoke about before, obviously, you know, he's, he's got such a low break even, you know, it was five heading into this week and because the, the sub score has come off, it's now negative, you know, negative 34. So, look, 60s and uh, 60s get him, you know, to maybe 330, 330 K, yeah, something like that. You know, he would have made us 70, 80 K if that's all he can produce. So, we are hoping that he can push on and get another decent score like he did uh, two weeks ago. It might be a fail, not a failed trade in, but you know maybe a wasted wasted trade in if he doesn't if he isn't able to do that. And they do do have the double Adelaide uh, fixture where they've got Port this week, and then I, I assume they'll probably stick around and they've got Adelaide in uh, gather round uh, the week after. So um, we'll see. He he is someone that you know forward sort of obviously mid spots are very valuable. But forward spots are becoming quite valuable too, especially with the rookies that you want to own that are making really good cash. Like Darcy's going to have to come in somewhere. He's forward only. Dempsey's forward only. Cadman got a hold Cadman now. He just went berserk. Um, Sexton, I guess, is the one that other people might be questioning. And um, I'll be honest, I didn't catch a lot of this game past sort of half time. I was heading to the to the Richmond game, but people uh, telling me move forward in like the third when Atkins came on to play a bit of, bit of defence. And then I think by, back in the fourth quarter, he was back in defence. So, like, if he's playing defence from you know, here on forward, I want to keep him because he can, I mean, he still made 50K this week and he's got still a negative break even. If he's able to pump out like 70, 80 off halfback in the next week or two, then he's going to kickstart some more cash gen and he'll end up making 150K, I think, quite comfortably if that's his role um, going forward. So it's a tough one with the buy this week. We don't know for sure. And people will want to maybe trade him out this week um, to get someone in like a Dempsey, say, if you don't have him. So it's a tough call. Um, I think I'm still keen to probably hold on to him for now. Dempsey, yeah, look, it's just always what happens. You know, I feel, uh, I field Cadman last week and, and bench Dempsey, who goes 96, and I go, oh, let's try to get Dempsey's points this week. I was always keen on, if I'm starting Cadman, to field him, and I just it's just a blunder not not sticking with it because, like, I know he's a key forward, and you go, oh, like, if he scored a 30, who cares? Then my next 59 or 60 score that, if, you know that we're all around the mark just comes on and you don't really take much of a hit but Cadman had the potential to do this especially against West Coast and yeah not fielding it's just a, a small blunder but a loss of about 30 points so um, yeah he's going to make a stack of money uh, Catters negative 52 break even he's going to be uh, a really really good rookie for us so very happy we started him and then Harley Reid uh, wasn't you know a bit nervous about benching him but I think out of the ones you know he's playing that sort of inside mid role in, in a very poor team against the, probably the best team in the comp I thought I'm more than happy to bench him this week but sort of going forward I'm, I'm more than happy to field him dogs not a tough uh, not an easy matchup I guess uh, away against their midfield swans at Adelaide Hills maybe not but a couple of softer ones after with Richmond and Frio maybe although a couple of their, their midfield uh, brigades in form as well. Uh, enough talking by, uh, for me. Let's get to the trades and, and, and wrap it up. So big question, obviously, Dacos and Young. Going to have to trade uh, Young out now because um, it's just you're less certain of him being a keeper season long, whereas you, you pretty much know Dacos will. So uh, Young being so poor has, has saved uh, Nick from, from being traded in my team. Some people might think about trading both, uh, but... You know, if you still got Reed to fix, do you really want to, you know, double that? I, I don't think so. And Hoare obviously might be a question mark going forward. Bonner can get out as well. Um, more than, you know, you can hold him, like I said before, but I think with me, uh, he's going to go. Then it sort of comes down to, I mean, obviously, look, let's just get Massimo in because that's clearly, for me, the number one option this whole week, uh, I think, in the whole game. I mean, unless you don't have McKercher, uh or someone like that. Um, he'll be the play and then it's what I do so I think a lot of people are going to want to go for Tom Powell I'm, I'm, you know include me in that I think he looks really good he's like the second mid um, I think he might have even been the first mid as far as CBAs goes and you know I've said before they can be quite not iffy but um, when your mid rotation is if you four goals get, get, get kicked in five minutes when you're getting four CBAs when 
someone, you know, the next mid that comes into the rotation, no goals are kicked. Well, you, they're not getting any themselves. So it's a bit hard to gauge, uh, to gauge sometimes, but he's at least in the top three. You know, it's LDU, him, Wardlaw. We've seen it now. Even with Jai back into the team, Lazaro played as well. It's it's TP. He's a part of the three. And Jai's just sort of pinch hitting, playing mostly half forward. And then Lazaro, well, he got subbed, so who knows what go, is going on there. Will Phillips is out of the team. So, you know, I think Power had some groin injuries last year. They said he was battling through that, played a bit more off half forward, but he's back and healthy now, playing full-time mid. He's 300k in the forward line. There's not many options down there. He's break even, he's negative 40. So, I mean, list goes on. It just, for me, is too good of an option to pass up. He may not be a keeper. I'm not, obviously, can, you know, locking that in. But I think at worst, he's going to make about 100k. We get another couple of weeks of whilst he makes that money of looking at the role. Have a couple of harder matchups, I think, like what Carlton this week, and then um, who's after that? Brizzy, you know, Brizzy can be good if they um, if they turn up. They've still got some experienced midfield, you know, midfielders in there. That's it. Gather around at Norwood Oval, so who knows what will happen there? But I just think with his break even now, this one thirty in the system, the role is there. Um, let's get him in and then see what happens. You know, I think this is probably the last sort of mid the two mid prices that I want to really jump on you know at this point in time but they've both got really low break evens that it, it becomes sort of low risk and i've seen enough of both of them in the roles now through two weeks to be confident enough to to pick them uh obviously it would have been lovely if i just did massimo last week I, I might not have even had to boost this week but that that is what it is and i guess i still don't you know you could just stick with these trades you're sort of going down a premium as such with young out and getting two of these sort of mid uh mid pricer types in but i do have 289k in the bank there's a few ways you can go about this um granny to english i don't know why i got rid of the boost there is one i've looked at you know english gets bj williams this week uh, i don't think they're going to go with barnett again um I'll be, i'd be very surprised and then geelong the week after and whether or not that's stanley i mean who really cares he'll beat up on stanley if they decide to go with conway well probably even better because uh Whilst I think he might be a better tap Ruckman Conway, he's not going to be able to keep up with English around the ground and he's still coming into his first two, you know, I guess that'll be his first game. Oh, he's played before. So either way, it'll be a fresh Ruckman against English. He'll have his way with him. It is an option, but there's just something doesn't sit right with me trading in a 715k player that, you know, hasn't moved price yet. His break even's 150 and look, by all means, he'll probably hit it this week. But it just doesn't sit well with me. And not everyone will have this option. So it was either that or I was toying with uh, just putting it on Wines' head and getting Butters, who I was really keen on as well in preseason. He started like a house on fire. He's going to skyrocket in price. Make, you know, spend the cash there. Bank 116k to sort of spend next week on, on maybe a rookie correction or um, whatever, whatever needs to be done. Um, but we do have... The luxury option of doing Grundy to Zach Butters because you can put Jackson in the ruck. Don't have to watch Grundy play, uh, you know, too tightly or or focus too much on him because look, he scored thirty points in the first half against. Look, to be fair, a double ruck setup from Essendon. And he worked into it in the second half and, and did quite a few nice things. But I just still think in the ruck and in the contest, he's just doing some dumb things and uh, quite a few clangers both weeks. Nank this week isn't an easy matchup. Um, at the G, bigger ground, I'm not sure it suits Grundy as much anymore either. He's going to be a trade at his buy anyway. I don't think we're going to get much more money out of him from this point in two weeks anyway. And I don't want to be caught into the trap of... He goes 130 against BJ Williams just before his buy. And now we have to hold him um, because, you know, his break even will be low. I just don't want to see Grundy in my team anymore. And I think I've come to the ter- you know, come to terms with that. And it's just whether or not I go to English or Butters. And I think Butters, for me, you know, you're not spending 100K more getting English. He's going to skyrocket. You know, English can still drop in price. Um, and we can still get him later on. But Butters, after this, this game... Um, and with some nice matchups that he has uh, historically, anyway, you know, I think he went 180 on Melbourne last year. That was his um, sort of come out party, huge game. 
And then Essendon, a couple of years ago, he went 160, but I think it was more than three games ago. Uh, and it was actually more when he was playing half forward. But yeah, he can go big against Essendon. Look, look it's it's Adelaide Oval, Adelaide Oval, Adelaide Oval. Pies at the G, and the way the Pies are going, he'll probably cook them too. Saints at Adelaide Oval, Adelaide Oval against, obviously, in the, in the derby, like, or the showdown. I want to own Butters. I mean, watching him live at the ground yesterday, just look, against us, it's kind of easy money, really, for a midfielder. We're not we're not equipped to follow guys like Butters and Rosie, um, who, you know, who we're playing through there at the minute. Wines can be more accounted for, but he just gets everywhere, like, ridiculous. 15 kicks and 14 were effective, and I'd say half of them were inside 50s and score assists. Like, it's – the kid is incredible. Oh, he, oh, he is – Honestly, probably since last year, like top five player in the comp for his skill set. He's got an inside game too. Like he, he gets in the contest. You always worry about his body. Just goes a bit too hard sometimes when he's, you know, smaller in stature. But um, oh, captaincy option at least VC option most weeks. Um, and we and we get towards this midfield that I was so close to starting. Not all four, but at least three of them, and, and now moving towards four of them. Um, it does seem pretty nice. And then we have 150k in the bank. Um, would be set up like this. We'd have Jackson in the ruck for a few weeks. So the the the, the plan here would be probably Flanders off his buy, um, and whether that's from wines, it, it could be. I could easily afford him with the cash in the bank there. Flanders, I mean, to me, is still going to be F1. I think uh, you know it might be Heaney if he keeps this up or at least a role for, for the year. I think it would be him in that case, but Flanders F2 at worst uh, from here. And his break evens now still still 69. He went up 30K. So, you know, GWS off the buy isn't great, but, you know, even if he's tons up, he's going up a little bit more. You could maybe wait a week on that uh, and then get him for Hawthorne because Hawthorne, Sydney two weeks after that, North two weeks after that, Geelong, not a great midfield. It's going to be really good for Flanders, I think. Uh, and he's just a lock to be a keeper forward. So, you know, guys, who people who started him, fair enough. I just didn't want to start too many by plays, and, and Green was where I set it on just going for the one this week. Uh, we probably put the emergency on, I think, Williams and Carroll. So they play pretty early in the week, the Good Friday game, uh, and say Williams gets injured or scores poorly, uh, and we find out Hall isn't the sub, which he... He shouldn't be, I think, with May and Lever out, or at least May out for one. He may be a dead rookie in, in, in a couple of weeks' time again anyway. But, yeah, so if, if Williams doesn't go too great, we can do that. And then if Carroll doesn't go too great, um, we could just leave the big three on field, you know. So um, that's sort of where we're sitting. Uh, VC and C, maybe Sarong against Adelaide, um, and then into Bond. I mean, you can't. You can't pass that up. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. So if if Carol goes well, we just leave uh, Tommy Green on here and, and and take his score. Otherwise, would field. It might be a tough choice between Wilson and um and Clark because um you know Wilson might have a nice game at the, at Marvel against the Dons, but then Clark in the guts against Hawthorne. I'd probably opt for Wilson just if that was the case. And then down here, we don't have any, you know, choices. Uh, Marshall and Jackson. Forward line looks like this. Billings, you know, is, a, is obviously a close watch going forward. Cadman will be holding and Sexton uh, is also a close watch. So, you know, with Sam Darcy having to come in next week, uh, the big watch for me will be not whether he's coming in. It'll be who who is going out because, you know, tonning up in your first game, his break even is negative 61 already. He's going to make a stack of cash. He looked super good on the weekend. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that we don't have him this week against West Coast because that could be another massive score. Would I go early if you had, like, the luxury, say you had not many problems? Would you go early on Darcy? I wouldn't boost for it because, you know, you can see how that can go, how that can backfire. Um, you know, people who boosted in to bring Caulfield or something like that this week, it, it can really backfire on you if they get injured um, before they even make any money. So I wouldn't probably do that. But if you're just doing two trades or something and you were sitting really pretty, um, yeah, I mean, get Darcy this week because he's probably going to have another have a banger score. So, yeah, that's where the team sits, 150K in the bank. Whether we put that on Wines' head next week and get like a Flanders, could even get another midfielder. But we might want to fix Reed as well. 
there's not really many options. That's the thing, you know, looking at the defenders um, now that we've got Massimo. It's not much on offer. Um, Toby Pink's going to rise in price next week, so we'll miss that price rise. Do you get him when he's like 160K? I'm not so sure. Hopefully Warner's back. You know, I'm really actually banking on this this man being an option. After, you know, he had a horrible concussion. Um I think he's going to be out for two weeks for it. So hopefully he comes back the following week and looks good and we can we can jump on him. Bobby Brown, I'm just not too sure about his job security, but he, he looked okay. Uh, I think that's only his second game or something. Um, so maybe him. And then there's just not much else. Josh Draper's there, but, you know, 35, playing as a key defender. Don't love it. It's just not much. There's just not much. So Reed might have to stay... For a while, um, we'll see if there's a, an opportunity where we can flip him to, to someone who's making cash, but he might just end up waiting until he comes back. You know, he's out for like three to five or something like that. Yeah, around six, around eight. Tough one. So this is where I'm sitting and what I'm doing right now. Uh, obviously, may change. Uh, I may go back to uh, English. I'm not too sure, but I just think trading in a Ruckman for that that much money is a, is a hard thing to, uh, to swallow. Um, so I think Massimo must this week. Powell's not as must as Massimo. Like, I'd probably have Massimo as 10 out of 10. You probably, you, you got to grab him, especially with the way the defense is going. TP probably made it like an 8 out of 10 must have, like maybe even a 9. It's it's really hard to pass up someone playing full-time mid in the forward line for 300K with a negative 47 break even. It's just a really, really hard one to pass up. Look, a couple of 80s in his 400K. So, yeah, I think as close to a must as there is and that third trade is a, is a hard one you know will you look at a Dempsey if you don't own him um out there would you look at a Carroll if you don't own him it's a hard one um obviously McCurcher Sanders uh, Roberts if you don't have a, a, a head of all of those um or if you have the luxury like me that you've sort of got most of these already do I spend the money and put it you know into a premium get rid of Grundy someone I don't want to you know don't see owning too much longer uh, and do it that way that's the way i'm sitting right now so um thanks for watching rambled on for a bit today i promise the rambles to get less and less as the season goes on but obviously such a key point in the year wanted to just get my thoughts out there uh, as always if you've got any questions leave them below i will i will be sure to reply to comments uh, i always try to and we'll see you for the podcast uh, whenever that comes out soon so thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one cheers Yeah. <laughs>